Ooh, it's just devastating over there, all the stuff that's going on right now. So we wish them nothing but the best and a speedy recovery for sure. Yeah, I, I think with Helene, it's really important to remember that inland, well inland, you can still have really devastating effects from tropical systems. And so it's important to just really pay attention to the forecast if one is headed our your direction. And so right now we are breaking down the tropical overview. The next names on the list would be Kirk and Leslie, and there's a lot of activity going on. So breaking it all down, Helene is weakened and is no longer an issue, but of course it caused catastrophic damage, not only on the Florida coast, but really up into the mountains of South and North Carolina as well. We have tropical depression Joyce that will stay in the central Atlantic as it continues to weaken. Tropical depression 12, so with this storm doesn't have a name yet, but it's going to follow a similar path to Joyce. We also have tropical storm Isaac that's going to stay uh, far off into the north and eastern Atlantic. There's 60% chance of development there with a new system uh, that's following behind tropical depression 12. And then additionally, what we are watching very closely, of course, is that Central American gyre and the 50% chance of development with a low that is now developed right here uh, off the coast of uh, Nicaragua there. So this is what we are watching with the chance of moving into the Gulf of Mexico. So one thing I'm going to keep an eye on is our moisture content. So something that pops off to me is it does look like a little bit of a trough develops. So this is kind of a weak tropical wave almost. It doesn't look like it's going to develop into anything, but this is what's going to help bring moisture into South Texas later on this week. So it's not a lot. It's not for everyone, but we do you start to see moisture returning, which does boost our rain chances Friday into Saturday. This is where it looks like we'll get some rotation, uh, some broad area, a broad low moving into the Gulf of Mexico. That is what has a medium chance of developing. Now, several cold fronts are going to be making their way through the United States, and so that's going to help pull that system again up toward Florida. The strength is still too far out to really determine all of that, but high pressure settles back in over Texas as we head into next week. So you can see on the rainfall forecast that path of that system keeping mu much of the rain across the Gulf of Mexico. So yes, we have a chance of rain across South Texas. That's more so from that trough that moves in. It looks like anything that tries to develop in the Gulf is going to stay uh, more so on a tr path toward Florida. Anywhere that was impacted by Helene, very uh, open and susceptible to any damage, no matter how strong the storm does become. Now 90 for your feels like temperature at 11 a.m. We are going to have feels like temperatures back near 100 later on this afternoon. You'll see clear skies, lots of sunshine here in the coastal bend for today and really much of the upcoming week. Now, one thing I want to point out is our muggy meter is slowly going back up. But as we see that moisture returning there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that's when we have our best opportunity of rain. It looks like Friday and Saturday we'll get some widely scattered showers in the area. So we'll have to watch out for any activity impacting the blitz. Most of this will likely be derennial, meaning that it would impact uh, during the daytime and not so much at night. We'll break down that complete forecast uh, more specifically coming up.